we've got Ryan Smenda here. We'll uh, open it up for questions in the room and then we'll turn it over to Zoom. Ryan, I asked Sean this, but just like, what's your excitement level like when you started entering conference play after you got a couple seasons, or a couple of games in your gut? Uh, well, I think just to begin the season, you know, with just with ODU, my excitement level was through the roof, just to be able to play football with fans back in the stands. Um, I think it's a good thing for everybody, fans and players. Um, but once we started the ACC play, obviously, you know, people say you could treat every game different, but, you know, it's it's not it's not the same, really, you know. Uh, playing against the ACC opponents, you know, every game counts. We're playing for ACC championship this year. So this game means more than anything, just because, one, it's the next one, and two, it's the start of the ACC play. Kind of give us an idea of what you see in the Florida State offense. And I imagine it may be a little harder because you see them play the game they did against Notre Dame and then they play this Saturday. It looks mm -hmm. a little different. Um, what's, what's it been like trying to take that in? Uh, well, we know they have a lot of good players, uh, but that doesn't phase us. You know, we got to come out every day of practice, get the scheme. Uh, we know who we're going against. So um, we're just preparing for anything, and we know what they're capable of. They're capable. They hung in with Notre Dame. They're obviously a very talented team. Uh, but we're not taking Jacksonville State as though um, they're telling us that Florida State's not a good team. You know, if we go in there like that, they're going to hang up a lot of points on us. So we're going in there with the mentality that they're trying to come in here and beat us because this is the start of their uh, conference play as well. So we know they're coming in here with a chip on their shoulder, and they're coming to beat the Deeks, and we can't let that happen. As a Florida guy, do you get a little more fired up to play a team from Florida? Uh, not really. Um, you know, it's, it's ACC's, you know, it, it's the next big challenge. So I'm just ready to go. Um, and I know the guys are too, but, you know, being from Florida, FSU, you know, the rah-rah growing up, uh, Jameis and all of them, uh, you know, it's, it's just cool to play against a team from Florida. And I think it will be really fun. Did, did they recruit you at all? Or did you have any kind of relationship with them? Uh, not, not too much. Okay. No. It was a big thing with the staff and stuff, but I don't really pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, they would have been going through a bit of a transition. Right, with uh, Jimbo going to A&M around then. Gotcha. Um, Mackenzie Milton was named their starter. How closely have you paid attention to his story over the last four or five years? Uh, so when they were uh, – I remember when he got injured, I thought it was, like, the craziest thing. Um but, you know, it's good to see players come back like that. And, you know, it, it's really cool to see him come back and uh, put his team in a position to be successful. And, you know, that's that's really honorable as a player, as a football player. Um, and, you know, I, I respect the two quarterback system they have there. Um, I think Coach Norvell, he'll figure out something. But uh, but he's a very talented player, him and Jordan Travis as well. They're both talented players. Um, so we have to game plan and prepare for them both. You, like – with McKenzie, do you look at like what I don't know, what do you even look at to try to scout him and kind of appreciate the player he is now and and I guess the player that he was pre injury too? Um well we know he's he has a lot of game experience, so um he's gonna be more of a pocket passer versus Travis, who's more of a run threat. Um but they can both move the ball, they can both use their legs to get first downs and they can both throw the football. Um McKenzie's a little bit better at throwing it, a little bit more accurate. Um but going into the game plan, we, we just got to know to stay in coverage a little bit longer when McKenzie's back there versus Jordan Travis is going to look to try to scramble to get that extra yardage. Um, so, yeah. Going back to about nine months ago, have you fully moved on from the disappointment that you guys are going through a walkthrough and then all of a sudden John Curry comes out and tells you that the game tomorrow is canceled? Right. Um, yeah, we're, we're very much past that. We know last season wasn't anything that we wanted to represent and bring to the city of Winston-Salem. So um, this year we're coming back with a whole new chip on our shoulder because we got the players, we got the talent to be very special this year, and we know we can't waste it. All right, we'll turn it over to Zoom. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Just how important is it for you as a player to to kind of look out and, and see a big crowd there supporting you guys Saturday Saturday afternoon? Uh, as a player, it's everything. You know, we take that fuel and we take that fire that the crowd gives us and we use it to our advantage. Um, I think it's very important that whenever the crowd's like screaming and things like that, uh, that we we can't get too involved in it because we still have to stay locked into the game. And, you know, we got to lock in and, you know, we still got a game to win. 
but just compared to last year with no fans, uh, obviously it sucks. It kind of sucks the juice out of the team, uh, not being able to have any support there with you live. Um, so with the fans being there this year, it's it's going to be an amazing sight. How would you grade the linebacker play so far through the first two games? And is there is there anybody in your group that, that's really impressed you so far? Uh, so far, I think the linebackers have been doing really well. Obviously, we have a lot of things to clean up because we're never perfect. Uh, in terms of personnel, I think the first starting four is doing really good. DJ Taylor, uh, Chaz Jones, Luke, we're all doing a really good job. Uh, we just got to keep getting better every day because the competition and the teams are only going to keep getting better. Ryan, how are you? Hey, how you doing? What, what's with that? Where did that come from? Uh, how do you, how do you my, put the probably my dad. Uh, you, you mentioned you have to prepare for two quarterbacks. Talk to me about what that's like in practice. Does, does the scout team have to go extra? Do you face extra plays? Or do you just concentrate on a couple at a time? Uh, I kind of concentrate at a different things at a time, but um, they'll sprinkle in, uh, you know, just some like the uh, pocket will break down, the quarterback will get out. And, you know, it's important for everybody, front level, back level, that we take our proper angles and, you know, get to the quarterback with effort and speed. How important is it to, to put in a little extra film work to, to study two quarterbacks like that? Uh, very important because they both have different tendencies. They both have different things they like to do when the pocket does break down. Some scramble to look for routes, some scramble to look for lanes, you know, to pick up those extra yardage. breakdown off uh, Norfolk State's touchdown right before the end of the first half? Uh, we just had some miscommunication in the back end. That was all. But it's nothing that we haven't gone over. Um, it's something that we just got to lock in. We can't have those miscues this weekend. Are you comfortable telling me whose fault it was? Uh, it's the whole defense fault. I'm not going to point any fingers. We just we can't let it happen again, though. Yeah. Did, was the defense better against Old Dominion than Norfolk State? Uh. I think I know what the stats tell me, but like, did it feel like the first week was better than the second week? Uh, to me, I would say so. I think we kind of came out. Uh, I would, I wouldn't, I don't want to say content, but we didn't give them the credit they deserved because they were driving the field on us and they could have easily punched it in like they did that time. Um, but definitely in the first drive, we got to come out a lot better. We can't come out uh, quiet against FSU. Is it? Is it annoying for a defense? Maybe that's the wrong word, but when a when an offense is running the ball, running the play clock down to one second every time, and mm -hmm. they're getting lined up fast, so you have to get lined up and then just basically sit there in a stance for twenty seconds. What's the feeling for a defense there? I wouldn't say more annoying, but uh, it's very smart football for them uh, because if you can control the clock, get your points, uh, and you know keep our offense off the field, knowing that we're an explosive team. Uh, that's a very smart play by uh, Norfolk State. So do you think that it's going to be a blueprint that other teams follow? Uh, possibly, but, you know, uh, <laughs> if, they don't get the, if they don't get their first downs, then that could be an issue for them as well. Ryan, you talked a little bit about uh, Luke being next back there next year, and you guys obviously are the leaders in the defense, the older guys. He's new to the position, though. Is it still? Is there still a lot of conversation between the two of you about what needs to be done, or is it just he's got it, he knows it, you go about your business? Uh, well, every day we try to find things that we need to improve on. Uh, he finds things that I need to improve on. I find things that he needs to improve on. And we talk about it. You know, that's the biggest thing about linebackers is you, you have to communicate. Um, if we're confused about something, we'll talk it over and we'll get it right then and there. We don't let it sit and we don't let it go grow into a bigger issue. Um, so when we're on the field, we'll say, hey, like when this happens, let's do this. He'll be like, all right, bet, we'll do that. Uh, if when we're on the sideline, we'll talk things over with Coach Hemp uh, and we'll get it corrected then. Uh, but Luke's a very smart football player. He can pick up and, you know, apply things to the game a lot quicker than some of the other guys who uh, have also transitioned. Um, and I think that's what makes him a special linebacker. Do you see some of the younger guys watching you two do that and say, okay, this is the way I need to do it when I get to that time in my career? Yes, sir. Uh, we, when we uh, go with the younger guys, when they get their reps, uh, I see them talking on the field. I see them giving UU commands. Um, that's all we want to see. We want to see them controlling the defense, you know, growing up, maturing in that role, because as the years progress, they're going to have to do that for our team to keep uh, getting better.
Anything else for Ryan? All right. Thanks, guys.